This work session regular meeting of the Township Council is called to order. In accordance, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, please call the, read the Open Public Meeting Act. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of the January 22nd, 2019 work session and regular meeting of the Franklin Township Council was provided as required by law. Um, please stand by, for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by Councilwoman Francois. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Standing. As we gather here today as members of the Township Council, we pray that we are ever mindful of opportunities to rent service to fellow citizens in our community, keeping in mind always the enduring values of life, exerting our efforts in those areas and on those things upon which future generations can build with confidence. Let us continue to strive to make it a better world. Um, Madam Master Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase. Councilwoman Francois. Here. Councilman Galtieri. Here. Mayor Kramer. Here. Councilman Noni Jaka. Councilman Prasad. Here. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Here. Councilman Wright. Here. And for all those who are, I guess, watching this in review, who are trying to get this live, uh, we are not live right now yet. Um, the videographer had um, a family emergency or um, could not um, come. He set up things in advance. Uh, it is being recorded, and when our IT staff gets here, they'll hit the right button, and it will go live at that time. Uh, but for a few seconds here, we are, are not live. Um, we are on, now on to number item number five, commendations and proclamations. Ro roll call. Uh, oh, it's all uh, roll call. Did roll call. Yeah. Um, but you got me. I almost did it again. Uh, commendations and proclamations. Uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, if you could this Here proclamation from, yeah. from down there. Take two. Franklin Township, Somerset County, Mayor and Township Council. Commendation. Whereas Ahmed Abad Allah's Negri Nipoti Grasslands Preserve Nature Interface Project consists of the installation of handmade interpretive signage related to the various bird species native to New Jersey or those who use the grasslands as a migratory stopover. And whereas over six months, Ahmed carefully constructed these signs using materials provided by the Department of Public Works and following completion, the Department of Public Works installed each sign as marked out by Ahmed. And whereas Ahmed Abad Allah has contributed to, to the well-being of the residents in our community and to all visitors of the preserve by giving tirelessly of his time and energy. Now, therefore, I, Philip Kramer, Mayor of the Township of Franklin and Rajiv Prasad Councilman, on behalf of the Council and the citizens of the Township of Franklin do hereby recognize Ahmed Abadullah, for his tireless efforts and dedication in helping others. Signed, Philip Kramer. Mayor, Mayor, would you like to say something? 
Well, I very much appreciate uh, what you've done uh, for the community. You actually, usually it's Boy Scouts who do these kinds of things. I hope you get a merit badge out of this. <laughs> um, but um, I can't wait to go to the, the park and see what you've done. Um, and you've made the town that much better, so thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, I would like to say thank you for uh, to everyone in the township, um, especially uh, the Open Space Committee and uh, the Department of Public Works. They uh, they, they helped um, significantly with the project, and I appreciate all the support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we are now open for public discussion. Well, I'm sorry. I'd like to uh, call for a motion to open for public discussion. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion on that, all in favor of opening for public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. We are now open for public discussion. Anyone wishing to speak um, may do so. We are limited to five minutes. You may come up once. No yielding of time. Please state your name and address and please address the council anyone wishing to speak Ms. Baker Skip Schaefer two layer terrace Somerset good evening council and uh, Mr. Prashad is still here, smugly sitting up on that dais. I'm not going to address him directly tonight. Enough has been said about him. Instead, over the coming weeks or until Mr. Prashad resigns, several of us are going to focus the spotlight on the rest of council, council individually and collectively. Don't know how much you follow current events, how close you follow them, but with this uh, ridiculous government shutdown um, over a ridiculous wall, uh, there's a clip of uh, Donald Trump at a commencement speech in 2004 in which he's telling graduates uh, when, they're, when he's encouraging them to, to meet their goals, people are going to put walls up in front of you. Walls are going to be put up in front of you. Don't let walls stop you. Go over them, go through them, go around them, go under them. Never let walls stop you, which if you think about it is pretty funny given his current uh, position. There's also a clip of uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller giving a commencement speech in 2013, and one of his pieces of advice to graduates was, don't ever sacrifice your integrity. Now, who used to be referred to as uh, uh, the most trusted man in America? Anybody up there know? You know, Mayor, say it. Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Right. Robert Mueller and Walter Cronkite, men with integrity, when they spoke, you believed what they said. Now let's get back to Franklin's Prasad problem. And it's also playing out on the national stage. Republican Representative Steve King from Iowa has a history of making racially insensitive or racist comments. His latest is, when did the terms white nationalists or white supremacy become offensive? Of course, Democratic Party members started to assail him for his comments, and that's to be expected. But listen to what some members of, the, of his own Republican Party said about Mr. King, one of their own. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, his statements are unwelcome and unworthy of his position. If he doesn't understand why white supremacy is offensive, he should find another line of work. Republican Governor Mitt Romney of Utah, he should step aside, resign, and Congress ought to make it very clear he has no place there. Republican House Rep Chris Stewart of Utah. I wish he'd resign, frankly. He can't do the work. He has lost the trust and faith of his comrades. For the good of the party, for the good of the American people, I think it's time for us to make a change. What actions have been taken so far in regards to Representative King's comments? 
He's been stripped of all his committee assignments. <laughs> Follow-up statement from Representative King. I will continue to point out the truth and work with all the vigor I have to represent 4th District Iowans for at least the next two years. And he's sorry for the heartburn his statements have caused, but he has not apologized for these statements. Does this sound familiar? Doesn't it sound like Mr. Prasad reciting meeting after meeting? It is my honor and privilege to serve the people who elected me, and I will continue to do so to the best of my ability. We've never heard an apology for his racist statements and his unethical actions over the last three plus years. Now contrast these Republican statements to council statements, or more accurately, non-statements from most of you regarding Mr. Prasad's actions over the last three plus years. Arguably on a bigger stage with more to lose, Republicans are ostracizing one of their own and calling for his resignation. Not like in Franklin, where Democrats overwhelm Republicans in elections and have little fear of losing their positions. Think about that when Peg Schaefer and Rod and Jordan apply a new piece of duct tape over your mouths. Think about that when the council's integrity comes into question. I'll see you in the coming weeks. The spotlight is bright. Bring your shades and umbrellas. The fallout is coming. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Benjamin Guy, 35 Patton Drive. Um, just wanted to highlight something, and it never really got uh, never really got addressed in the community altogether. So down in um, down in Princeton, the, and I think everybody knows because it became national public media that was out there. There was a supposed to be a white nationalist ra rally that was actually done. Uh, a couple of the actual participants or the residents that actually helped organize the rally are part of Kingston community. Again, this is known because of pretty much it was out, out there as far as the, the community is concerned. Now, the question is, is that as town council, police staff, or anybody else, has anybody looked into it? Because we talk all day about racist comments and racist, con uh, racist condor, con uh, contour, but we don't talk about addressing it in, even in our own backyards. So the question is, is that do we leave it there or do we even, or do we just classify it as a hoax because just because they didn't get the publicity they did still got still got media attention and they actually still actually filed the permits that was there. So the question is, is that are we being tolerable of certain acts? Because so fact of the matter is that we can yell all the day about what somebody said, but this was actually action that happened in our own backyards. That was actually going to get rally, uh, that a rally. They had a had a posing rally that was actually in our backyards at all. And I tried to warn you guys about this before because I said this about two and a half years ago when I came up here before. That again, as you tolerate these behavior and as you tolerate certain certain things that are going on in the community that you think are non-racist non-racist behavior, this stuff bu starts bubbling as you're seeing at the council meetings now. All this energy and all this negative stuff that has been going on is because it's been bubbling in the community you're actually fueling fires because you keep tolerating these actions of people coming up here talking about, about racist behavior at all. So again, this is fueling actions. So I've asked this numerous times based on community representation. The person that is doing it, I asked them to stop. I'm asking them to stop, the, stop all the bantering and stop all what is going on in the community because you have the resources to do it. You are not doing it. Again, I, I, Mr. Guy, I, 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 you're begging the question. What, what exactly are you talking about? Because if you're talking about the event that took place in Princeton, that's not Franklin Township. Okay, you, okay so let me finish now. Oh, oh, this right. is my you'll so, you'll, so you'll this take my, your time. You'll get it back when okay. I'm done. All right. Stop okay. the clock. So uh, you're, you're, that event took place in Princeton. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about, you, you made a reference to Kingston. Yes. All right. So... 
there was a, apparently reported third hand a flyer that was found back in June. However, that flyer was destroyed by the person who found it, so it was never able to be investigated because there was nothing further to investigate. There were no other flyers found in Kingston. Um, and so I, I, do, I just, I need to know what you are specifically we can have a, We can have an offline discussion. Well, I, you bring it I'm up I'm bringing it up because in front of the council, we are fueling the fire of still race behavior in this town. That's what I'm addressing. Because again, we're still having a conversation about back and forth about racist behavior. So I'm asking the conversation, the we town council, to the town council is here to actually stop that. They're gonna have a private discussion about all this stuff that's going on with Mr. Prasad or whoever else is involved because we're, we're individually pointing out fingers right now. And like I said, again, the town just needs to actually, actually do business. If you're, if you're gonna keep uh, buying te people's time and tolerating people's time about tying them up about nonsense, this is, you know saying, this is nonsense that goes on in this town council right now. And it needs to stop. That's all I'm asking. And again, you guys can address it and you don't want to. So I'm just asking you guys to stop it. That's all. So that is all my time for now. So uh, I, Mr. Guy, how do you suggest we stop it? Again, uh, it could be a public hearing addressing these actual talk, talking points about what's going on with Mr. Prasad. The, the community and uh, uh, the third party that actually, uh, actually wants to have this conversation, there could be a town hall discussion so about it. So you want a special meeting about Mr. Prasad? If that's what is necessary so that this gets addressed, that's what can be done. Yeah, um, because because okay. how many town count and I'll ask this direct question to you. How many town council meetings have they came to this specific committee and these people that are involved? Because is they've came to at least 12 count council council meetings. And if you count back almost two and a half years, it's been about at least 25. And it's all taped. We can go back to the records. So I'm asking as a public citizen. It's in child, it's, it should not be addressed because if if I came here and did the same thing, I, the police would be called on me. And I'm just trying to address it to say that it needs to stop. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Mr. Lenz. Evening, Council. Uh, Sydney Lenz, 22 Cornelius Way. Uh, Councilman Prasad, uh, are you planning on resigning anytime soon? Are you planning on resigning anytime soon for your comments regarding Republicans not wanting any statues of coloreds in Franklin Township. Are you planning on resigning? Um, I do want to thank uh, Mayor Kramer and Councilman Chase. Uh, they did speak up about it. A uh, gentleman before me is talking about cutting back or me not being able to voice my opinion or voice what I feel is wrong from what a council member said, not somebody at the, at the microphone, somebody who doesn't hold a public office. This is what an elected official said. It's not just one incidence, it's multiple. And the only two council members that I have seen say anything, it's been Mayor Kramer, Kramer and Councilman Chase. Mr. Galtieri, are you, any opinion about it? I've seen other council members come up or you know, at their, their comments and say, I'll take it all in, I'll think about it, I'll discuss everything, and I'll get back to you and let you know what I think. Nobody said anything. If the shoe was on the other foot, how would you feel? Not only once, twice, three times. Councilman Galtieri, any, any response to how you feel about what he said, or what he's done, or the position that he's put the uh, township manager in? Anything? Silence again. Councilman Vassanello, you said a smidgen of, of response. Nothing damning. Nobody says anything. Mayor Kramer, 
Councilman Chase said something. Very little. My understanding, uh, Councilman Galtieri benefited from the things that Councilman Prasad did with the peace and nonviolent monument. Perhaps somebody should go to the Somerset County prosecutor and find out what, how he benefited. He hasn't said anything, hasn't voiced an opinion about it, or the other council members, how they were complicit with Mr. Prasad's actions. They are complicit. They haven't said anything. They've benefited. And that's why they're silent, because they've benefited from what Mr. Prasad said. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, yes, Bernadette Marr, 4 Norris Road, Somerset, New Jersey. And I wish we could move past this already. I mean, with the person who's our president right now, I think this is very minor. And there's so much work to do here in Franklin. I think it's been enough. Okay? Uh, I would really enjoy uh, and welcome help in an issue that's really pressing for this community. And this is um, the um, Compressor Station 206 and the Northeast Supply Enhancement Project. I just wanted to give a brief update that uh, time is running out to make comments to FERC, okay? Uh, the final environmental impact statement is tentatively due to come out on January 25th. And so any comments that anyone can make to FERC, that would be very helpful at this time as we have a very short period left. Um, second of all, um, I wanted to update you that uh, Assemblyman Danielson has introduced a resolution and um, that's gonna come before the, just let me, I'm sorry here. Um, uh, a sponsor, a resolution uh, managed to move to his committee, the Assembly Oversight Reform Federal Relations Committee. Uh, the resolution will be heard this coming Monday, January 28th at 2 p.m. And anyone who is able to attend, we would definitely appreciate it. Uh, this resolution is in opposition to Nessie and Compressor Station 206. Um, you can check out our website, www.scrap dash Nessie, N-E-S-E dot org, or you can email if you'd like more information about that, stop ft compressor at yahoo.com. Also, I'd like to mention that our next uh, task force meeting will be held on Monday, February 4th at 8 p.m. here in the town council building. And again, we would welcome help rather than spending our efforts trying to beat a dead horse, we could really use your help in this community to do some do other things. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Bissard. Chandrakant Desai, living in Von Lindsay Court, Franklin Park, New Jersey, 08823. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, Honorable Council Members, ladies and gentlemen, only yesterday we had we had the Dr. M. L. King celebration because of his birthday, and it's a very important event of the whole year. I should say, in this country, where the immigrants are coming up from all the parts of the world, and they have different colors, different beliefs, different ideology, and so many things. And still, we are living together. So it's a very unique experiment in the whole world, I would say, in the United States. And we should do it uh, positively and successfully in that particular operation. Now, is a book. Uh, it's, it's a collection of my poems. And this is Dr. M. L. King's poem, which I would read, which itself, with the poem itself, will speak about it. Black or white makes no difference. 
Dr. M. L. King simply loved humanity. He walked straight, but kneeled down to love. And hatred, injustice couldn't bend him. He wanted to bring American democracy from the pages of constitution to reality. Untiring, he traveled from town to town, knocked every door and touched every heart to tell his message of love, liberty, and equality. Together with his wife, Coretta, he had a dream, a dazzling dream, dissolving the color bars, conquering the hearts, and welcoming civil rights. His fearless heart welcomed the bullets too, and he conquered even the death. He loved Gandhi's path of truth and nonviolence, and followed it to the last drop of his blood. He sided the right and rejected the wrong, and won the battle could be tough and long. In and out, he was clean and compassionate. He broke the walls separating man from man and considered the world as one great family. Flowers or bullets, he took or he took on himself with same spirit. Death touched him with a heavy heart, leaving his message, his dream, living forever. That is what he told, and that is what we have to uh, uh, we have to digest in our life. Just I read one poem. I was invited to read my patriotic poem in Congress in 2003, in the newly elected Congress in Washington, D.C. Just only few lines I will read out of that one, which are too long, so which is only concerning the spirit of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Our beauty, our beautiful America, glitters with the shining rainbow colors, white, black, yellow, brown, red, and several others. Beauty of the rainbow is not just in heaven, it is on the earth too. Behind all these colors is the one single crystal clear color of the rays, rays of the supreme sun, our gracious God, who dwells in all the lives, all the races and religions, and blesses with enormous grace, not just one nation, but the entire world. So this is the spirit as it was celebrated yesterday, let us celebrate this particular spirit in words and in action and in the spirit of all the, uh, oh, whatever the, uh, whatever the processes, whatever the whole formalities and things going on in the council also, we should see that that spirit comes up. Let us see that People have, I, I read the newspapers, and I, people have even doubt that perhaps the same rainbow spirit is not fully available even in what White House. People have doubts even for, for that also. So now let us avoid those doubts. Let us avoid that, see people, we see the same spirit in, in uh, council, in Franklin Township, and also in the Franklin newspapers. Everywhere, the spirit should come up. And let us see that that spirit comes up. And I would request Rajiv Prasad not to resign, but come again and serve this community as a council member at large, again over here. Mr. And Desai, your time I is would, up. I would say that, please go ahead about that. Don't listen to all these Mr. people. Mr. Desai. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? <clears throat> Seeing no one come forward, a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion on council. All in favor of closing public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. Public discussion is closed. Um, so we are now on to item number seven, council discussion on and selection and appointment of a council person uh, at large. So for those of you who have not been paying attention. Uh, Chanel Robinson uh, was elected freeholder, um, and um, uh, took, when she took that seat, she vacated this seat. 
The way that works is the party she is from, which is the Democratic Party, selects three people. They have selected three, and then those three people's names are uh, provided to the council, and the council picks from those three names. Madam Clerk, what were the three names submitted to council? Crystal Pruitt, Edward Pithasnik, and Edna Argulo Fitchner. Do I have a nomination from anyone on council for any of those three people? Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate Crystal Pruitt for the at-large council seat. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Do I have a motion that nominations be closed? Seconded. So, Mr. Wright, your mic wasn't on, but Mr. Wright made the motion, seconded by Mr. Prasad. All in favor of closing nominations, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, nominations are closed. Since there's only one person, we could do it by acclamation, but this is of enough importance. I think we should have roll call. Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase. Pruitt. Councilwoman Francois. Yes, Crystal Ca Pruitt. Councilman Galtieri. Yes, for Crystal. Mayor Kramer. Crystal Pruitt. Councilman Oni Jaffa. Crystal Pruitt. Councilman Prasad. Crystal Pruitt. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Crystal Pruitt. Councilman Wright. Crystal Pruitt. Congratulations, Pruitt. Ms. Pruitt. Pruitt. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's now appropriate for you to be sworn in. I understand that uh, the assemblyman from the which district is it? Sixteenth district. I know. I know the areas you Princeton and Hillsborough, et cetera, many others. Um, um, count, uh, councilman. I promoted you. Assemblyman Swicker, uh, uh, I understand you'll be doing the swearing in. So if Ms. Pruitt and Mr. Swicker would come up to the podium with our clerk and anyone else you wish to uh, bring up. You own this time. You can do whatever you want here. <laughs> <One and only. laughs> it's downhill from here. <laughs> Off, something happened. So, as they're assembling, um, many people are commenting on the, the temperature, Mr. The Formal. controller is broken, as you were told by the public works manager at our budget meeting on Thursday or Friday. It, it, there's nothing that can be done. It's we'll just have to put a code on. If you're cold, unfortunately, I can't make it come on because it's broken and the repair has yet to be. You can't cut the ear off. There, it's broken. <laughs> it cannot be repaired. It's okay. on. Thank it's you. gone. Thank you. Back to the moment of importance. Um, if you could use the microphone so that the viewing public can hear. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the council as well. Uh, Ms. Pruitt, if you put your hand on the Bible and raise your left hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Crystal Pruitt. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the government established in the United States. And to the government established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of council at large. And perform all the duties of council at large. Of the township of Franklin. Of the township of Franklin. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations.
And perhaps we'd like a picture with all of council there too. All right, we'll move down over there. Assemblyman, whose camera do I have? Oh, here you go. Not paying attention to the assembly. Where are you yelling at me? I didn't get one picture like that. What's with the start? I didn't get one. Oh man, I'm crushed. Well, Slick didn't get one. Did you get one? Huh? Assemblyman Zwicker has asked to speak first, so we will let him. Um, Assemblyman uh, Zwicker is, uh, um, holds Rush Holt's um, position at Princeton and is the man I call the smartest person on the assembly. Not a lot of competition, but the uh, <laughs> smartest person on the assembly. I'm, I'm just texting the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to the council, and to the residents, thank you for just a moment to address you. Uh, I do represent the 16th district. I am a, a resident of Kingston, but I'm on the wrong side of 27 to live here, so I'm actually a South Brunswick resident. Uh, to the, to the uh, resident who spoke about the compressor station, thank you for bringing that up. I live right down the, the road from it. I know it's an important issue to every member of Franklin Township uh, and to the area. But uh, I want to thank Councilwoman Pruitt for the honor of swearing me in. For those of you who don't know, uh, the reason why she allowed me to come into a different district is because uh, she also is my chief of staff. And I'm so I feel very honored to be able to work with Ms. Pruitt uh, during the day and want to wish her nothing but the best of luck uh, with the council and as members of the council um, thank you you know for your your wisdom here um, I think that Ms. Pruitt will make a really wonderful addition to the council and I very much look forward to seeing what she and all of you do together for the residents of Franklin in 2019 and beyond so thank you for a moment to addressing the council thank you, thank you. Ms. Pruitt. <clears throat> so when this became a reality, um, it really was just, I, I only felt two things, excitement and just being absolutely terrified, right? <laughs> um, and I don't think those things are gonna change, um, but they shouldn't because at any time I feel particularly comfortable, um, 
I don't think I can do the job well, right? So um, before I go on that, I do want to uh, thank my family. Surprise. I didn't tell them about this. I just told them to show up. <laughs> um, a thank you to Assemblyman Zwicker, who is my boss and my friend and I, I guess my mentor now because when things get tough, I'm going to look to you for some advice. <laughs> Uh, and also the rest of the, the council. Um, and also thank you for sharing me with my hometown. Um, so when the opportunity came for the vacancy on council, um, I had mixed feelings. Um, I'd always been someone who just lived in Franklin and just did stuff behind the scenes and kept a really low profile. But I realized that I also really wanted an opportunity to serve the place that I grew up. Um, I'm born and raised in Franklin Township. I went to the public schools here. I graduated from the old Franklin High School, so that gives you an indication of just how old I am. I, um, so I wanted to give back. I wanted to give back to the place that outside of my family, I can credit with the type of person that I am now. Um, I really love this township, and this to me is about service. It's about serving the residents, it's about making sure that everyone in this community can feel like they have a voice and they have a home here. Um, and that's what I'm gonna fight for every day that I am able to serve on this council. Um, I recognize that I'm an appoint I'm appointee, which is different from being elected. So I'm gonna take this unexpired term to work really, really hard to prove that I deserve to be here and that I'm here to serve. This is not a matter of ego. This is a matter of service. Um, and also, I'm really excited to also just hopefully encourage other young people, um, especially women and women of color, to kind of find their place in politics because I think it's going to be really important for the representation and the country can use some help. And I think that we can do that. So I look forward to working with the council. I know that sometimes we're not always going to get along, but as long as we're working to for the betterment of Franklin Township. That's all that matters. So thank you so much for uh, picking me out of the 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 wonderful, wonderful people who uh, went for this. And I look forward to working really hard with you guys. So we are now on to council comments committee reports. We will give Ms. Pruitt a rest and start with Councilman Wright. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really have nothing to say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All of our meetings are upcoming this week and next week. Um, but I would say one thing. Um, we have these open meetings like uh, housing authority, and no one comes to find out what we do at our housing authority meetings. Um, we have our recreation meetings. No one comes to find out what type of recreation or programs we have um, that we have here in Franklin Township. But when the notice comes out in our uh, newspaper, some people complain, well, why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? But no one shows up to make any comment. Um, this affects you. So I, I would encourage you to come to some of the meetings. Um, the planning board puts the house up next door to you. The planning board decides what comes up as far as uh, new buildings or something of that nature. The zoning board helps um, the planning board and vice versa because the zoning board looks at what's there, the zoning that's there, and see if it's worthy of being modified to fit the new building. But nobody shows up. So I guess what I'm saying is if you're happy staying home, okay, but if you want to affect what comes up in Franklin Township, I think you better come out because there's a lot going on. We're getting bigger, and if we're going to get bigger, people need to come out to find out exactly what we're doing. We have a lot of programs here, and I don't want to sound redundant, but um, – If you want to say something, better come out now 
then it's better to come out now than later on after it's built and then get mad because it was built. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Wright, for not having anything to say. Um, Mr. Chase. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we haven't had, I, the only council committee meeting that I've been at was the Financial Oversight Committee um, started hearing budget requests, but if anybody's going to report on that, it should be the mayor. And of course, we will be having budget hearings in, in February uh, where you can come and hear the public presentations of what the various departments of the township are asking for and what it all adds up to. So, seconding what Councilman Wright has said, you have an opportunity to come and learn. Um, I did have a meeting of the Agricultural Advisory Committee last Thursday, uh, which is probably the least attended of all our township um, board and committee meetings, and we had some interesting discussions that we want to really uh, record the history of agriculture in Franklin Township and uh, the current agricultural practices, what our farmers are growing and what it takes to grow them. And we'd like to better inform the public and particularly our school children of what it takes to uh, grow crops, grow cows, milk cows, and various things that our township farmers do. I also went to a meeting of the Central Jersey Transportation Forum, which is concerned with improving, or really improving traffic in uh, Central Jersey. That mostly means Route 1, and we're not on Route 1, so we're not so much affected. But if they ever get over Route 1, then we can turn to Route 27 and Route 518. We didn't have a meeting of the Kingston Village Advisory Committee this month because I was told by the chair South Brunswick had not gotten its act together to get the notices out. So, uh, And we've had a planning board meeting which was basically procedural uh, swearing in new and reappointed members, uh, and <clears throat> but we did hear, and we are proposing some minor rezonings. Uh, generally, most of our rezoning is to make the zoning conform to what is actually there. For instance, in this case, there are various private residences around the fringes of Canal Walk, well, which are in the senior citizen village zone, but are not part of Canal Walk. So we're going to propose changes of the zoning to <coughs> either say, well, the requirements that you're held to are those of the R40 zone, not of the senior citizen village zone, or uh, the farmland that is there will go back to the agriculture zone. So these are some of the things I've been involved with in my various township committees. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like a second bite at the apple if I can. Um, what I'd like to do is one, apologize for Ms. Pruitt. I was eating a peppermint when it came time for me to, to speak, so I was stuck with the peppermint, so I apologize on the name. But also, you just heard what Dr. Chase said, he's on the planning board. So if you live out in the neighborhood, he just changed your neighborhood. And if you don't come out, my good friend Dr. Chase will take care of business for you. And uh, that's all. We didn't change the neighborhood. We changed the zoning to conform to the neighborhood. This is council comments, not council argument. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Will we be hearing from you again? <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt. Uh, Mr. Prasad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
there were no meetings. There is meetings coming up. Uh, the uh, so we'll report on them. Uh, firstly, congratulations, uh, Crystal. Uh, welcome, and uh, I wish you all the success and best of service because uh, that's what this is all about. Uh, I'm here to serve and I was elected three times and I am grateful for that honor and if people have trouble accepting the fact that I was elected three times and people gave me that honor so I have to honor that the will of the people is what it is uh, and last I knew we're still in a democracy and I may have a strange name but I was not born in this country but I chose to be in this country because it's the greatest country in the world and I'm here to serve because I raised two children in this country I've lived here for over 40 years and this is my hometown too and I'm here to try and make it better. You may not agree with me, but I'm trying to do the best I can. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Francois. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to um, mentioned that the MLK Martin Luther King breakfast was yesterday. We took the time to celebrate the legacy of Dr. King. And it was so inspiring to me to see all of the diversity in Franklin Township. There were over 500 people there and there was such diversity in the room. That's what Franklin Township is all about. Unity, togetherness, and diversity. And we, 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 we're all proud to be here. We're all proud to live here. And it was very, very inspirational. I also wanted to uh, mention that Sergeant Sean Hubbin, this was his first year to lead that effort. Uh, I think he, the, he and the committee did a great job. And I also like the fact that they honored Ava Nash, who had led that volunteer effort for 21 years. She led that Martin Luther King breakfast initiative. And that's, that's a true um, testimony to someone to volunteer and provide that level of service for so many years. So I wanted to say congratulations to her as well and congratulations to the committee and to keep up the good work. And also, um, Councilwoman Crystal Pruitt, I was kind of shaking up here. My teeth were chattering because it's so cold up here. So I, I didn't say your name like I wanted to say it, but it was very much an honor and a privilege to nominate you to be on the council. I'm really looking forward to serving with you. I know that you're going to do a great job, and you're going to serve Franklin Township very, very well. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to have you up here as on the council. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Francois. Councilman Charles Onijaka. Uh, yes, Mayor. <clears throat> First of all, I want to use this opportunity to thank and congratulate uh, Dr. Alex uh, Barazi and the entire Franklin Township Martin Luther King Organization for organizing the fabulous uh, community breakfast we had yesterday. It was uh, fabulous and uh, it proved our diversity. To, at the same time, I want to use this privilege to congratulate our councilwoman, Presto, and I don't have any doubt in my mind that uh, she, she's going to be a good team player. So I want to use this privilege to congratulate her and welcome her too into our team. You're welcome. Thank you. Mayor, that's what I have for the day. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Will Geltier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I'll start with uh, congratulations, Councilwoman Pruitt. Welcome aboard. You are now the youngest member of council, so you get I get to pass the hat on that. <laughs> um, and, and welcome forward if I didn't say that. Um, as far as the yesterday, the MLK breakfast, uh, thank you to everybody that put a lot of effort into organizing it. It truly was a, uh, is a nice annual event. Um, I wish I didn't have to run early to go to work, but uh, once in a while, when your project goes live, you, you have to step out on certain things. But uh, again, thank you to everybody that organized it. 
Uh, just want to say thank you to everybody in Franklin for your patience while we while the authority did the work on Easton Ave. There were hope we sent out enough notifications and not too many, but um, I appreciate the patience. It's it's a once every two year event that uh, it just is to we talk about infrastructure. This is to make sure that our infrastructure remains intact. So um, uh, uh, what I want to say is thank you for patience to the residents. Uh, as far as my other committee meetings, nothing has really met yet. Everything's going to ramp up in uh, early February. So, thank you, Councilwoman Pruitt. I think I've said enough, but uh, I will, of course, thank everyone again and for welcoming me. And um, just to echo that yesterday or this weekend's event was really, really well done, and I think it really ties into a lot of what we have to do in our community in our township. Um, and just, you know, work, continuing to work on the diversity and not just lean on diversity, but continue to work at it. It is a marathon, not a sprint. And then also, we also fold in inclusion because that's also a major point in that. But thanks, guys. I'm excited to be here. Also still terrified. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't end. Um, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Jim Vassanello. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, welcome, Crystal. Um, I forget how many, but I heard several people stepped up when there was a position that became available. And at the end of the day, you pick one. We're, we're blessed in Franklin to have so many people that have the passion and desire to serve. Um, we really are lucky. And uh, I look forward to, uh, Crystal, your enthusiasm, your little bit of, don't be terrified, but <laughs> always, be, <laughs> always be ready, right? Anyway, uh, we welcome you and look forward to legislating and getting things accomplished in Franklin. Uh, the New Jersey Housing Resource Center, which I'm a member of, met last week. Um, Franklin's doing well in our affordable housing. Um, we had an elected officials meeting in Somerset County and, and the, the mayor and I think Councilman, Councilwoman Francois, I know Charles, I will. I, we had a pretty good showing, it was here in Franklin. They rotate around the county. Uh, we were fortunate to host Min Franklin, and the president of the League of Municipalities was there and did a, I forget her name, she's a mayor in Fanwood, and she, Colleen Marr, remember? Mm -hmm. Colleen. So um, she gave us some good input as to what's going on, and, um, you know, the economy and economic development and housing and all the usual issues were, were addressed, and it was a good, I hadn't gone in quite some time. Um, it's really not a committee, it's an organization, and elected officials get together, and, uh, uh, hear from speakers and talk about some issues that are facing all of the towns in, in Somerset County and throughout New Jersey. And um, Mayor, thank you for representing us while there at the meeting, along with the rest of the council people who went. Uh, land use, public work, land use is happening tomorrow. Public works and public safety are happening next month. Um, and they had the housing meeting. Um, yeah, there'll be a lot probably to report on going forward at the next meeting. Um, the gentlemen who were asking for commentary before uh, um, concerning the, the issue, Councilman Prasad, just, uh, I, I've said it, I thought it was pretty specific that certain comments and actions were just inexcusable. And I and Council voted for a very strong and serious resolution and I, I think it speaks for itself. So um, this is that this suggests that we weren't pretty specific in voicing our opinion. I'm not sure where it comes from, but um, we take very serious what everyone has to say in the audience, but we do have to legislate and get on with business in Franklin. So I think the resolution stands on its own. Um, otherwise, um, Mayor, I think that's that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so for my comments, um, first, again, I'd like to thank Assemblyman Zwicker. You are welcome here anytime to teach us about legislation or quirks, whichever comes to your mind. Um, I also noticed uh, Mr. Grippo is in house and uh, at the MLK uh, breakfast, he told me that the gazebo is paid for so um, every every last 
nickel has been covered, <coughs> and uh, I await uh, official news on that. That was unofficial news, so we thank you for your hard work there. Um, Ms. Pruitt, welcome aboard. I often joke with Ms. Pruitt, one of these days we're going to switch hairdos. I think that would, I'd be the winner in that. Um, and you'll excuse me if I ever refer to you as Councilwoman Ball. There's a uh, commentator on NPR, on um, MSNBC, Crystal Ball, and I've no caught myself calling you Crystal Ball. So, um, and that's only because you have such foresight. Um, I too was at the MLK uh, breakfast and uh, had an opportunity to cr create a uh, video that was presented there. And the main message of that video was um, that the founders did a great job in founding the country, but they made mistakes. And there were terrific flaws in what they did. Those mistakes were corrected somewhat by the Civil War and President Lincoln, President Lincoln. Um, uh, but um, that was just kind of in law, it was corrected. Um, the spirit and the justice of the correction, and we still need much, much more done, was done by Martin Luther King. He advanced us farther in that. And I believe for that, he stands alongside the Founding Fathers. Um, he is an American hero. Uh, there was an unfortunate event in one of our communities uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, a member of the Sierra Leonean community uh, died as a complications of childbirth. Uh, a very, very sad event. But uh, Mr. Or Dr. Karazi, um, and his mosque rose to the occasion. They, they needed a place to have um, a, um, a gathering, a memorial afterwards. And with the short notice and it being MLK weekend, it was difficult to find a place. And, and as that mosque often does, um, they stepped up and uh, there were they accommodated at least 500 people there. It was very moving um, how that community stays together. Um, she is survived by uh, two children and the father of her, of her uh, newborn. Um, so do the events uh, or the comments regarding uh, Mr. Prasad and these comments are to be taken as a whole. Um, I do believe council made a big step when they sanctioned Mr. Prasad, censured Mr. Prasad. To the best of my knowledge, and um, Councilman Chase knows more of the history than I, but um, I do not know that that has ever happened before. And uh, I do know that there was a sitting council person who committed a crime while in office. And I do know that there was a council person who was found wrong on ethics charges while in office. And to my understanding, there was no censure of them. So I do believe council has made a, a broad statement. I understand if you do not believe that that was loud enough, but that is your right. And that is the second half of this statement. Um, it is your right to come here, and I'm not giving you that right. The Constitution of the United States gives you that right in the very First Amendment. The, in both, in, of the five clauses of the First Amendment, the first is speech and the last is to address your government uh, with grievances. And you have the absolute right to do that. And um, the comment, I take offense by the comment of another person who has chosen to leave after his comments, that he would be arrested if he were to do that. I will tell you that if he were to make, that he is free to make comments as anyone else, as long as they are not disruptive. I have fought in the past to do that. 
to allow people to do that. I will fight in the future to do that. I joined my military to defend people's rights to do that. So I believe that comment was out of place. Um, and those are all the comments I have. Um, Mr. Uh, Vornlocker, um, for your report, it is somehow warmer now. And I don't understand as- It's as because it's broken. I, mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest with you, so the heat came on. There's no control over it. It's just now it is warmer, so. But I don't understand the comment of it can't be fixed. It's the repair, the parts are on order and I okay. can't adjust it. I can't okay. change it. It's on and be thankful you, that it's on. You can't on. fix tonight's problem, but That's it can correct. be fixed. Okay, well, good. And, and, and <laughs> I thought that that was explained to Mr. Mayor by Mr. Public Works Manager at the end of last year. Week. I was shivering too much to understand. <laughs> so, <laughs> do I, it's, it's part of climate change. Part of climate change, exactly. Global warming, it's now warm. Um, so my, my first order of business is to welcome uh, Councilwoman Pruitt to the best seat in the house up here, as I <laughs> might say. It's often fought over and they conceded it to you, which is just a vote in your favor from all eight of the other council members, I'm sure. Um, I, I have some things to report, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one is that you currently have scheduled a budget hearing for February 5th, and, and it is my recommendation at this point that we not have that meeting for a number of different reasons. Financial Oversight Committee continues to meet just about weekly in preparation for the budget, and I think that given the fact that the state has pushed back the deadlines by a month on submissions of budgets, um, as they often do, primarily related to uh, state aid calculations and, and the like. Um, I think that the second meeting that we have scheduled, which I believe is the 11th, um, it'll be the day before the uh, first council meeting of February, that we, that we continue to set that as the target date for the first budget hearing. So do I have a motion to cancel the February 5th budget meeting? Motion. So moved. Moved and seconded, any discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion is carried. Uh, that meeting is now canceled. Mr. Okay. Mr. Manager. Thank you. Um, uh, my next order is of business is to uh, just briefly uh, advise certain residents and, and business owners in the town, and, and I wish I could be more specific than to say within the second ward in the areas of Canal Walk and Somerset Run, um, as, as you may or may not be aware, our water department bills quarterly, but the town is broken down into sections so that our uh, collector's office sends out water bills every month. Mm -hmm. it, it's, there's, uh, there's multiple sections of the town. That section of the second ward in the area of New Brunswick Road and, and Schoolhouse and, and those surrounding areas, and it's roughly about 6,000 customers of our water utility. There was a glitch in the printing and distributing of the water bills back in December. The, the, uh, the grace period would be to the end of January. Um, and we, we determined that not all of the bills went out. Unfortunately, it's impossible for us to determine which bills went out and which bills didn't go out and which ones were missing. So we have remailed all of the bills for that December 1st billing um, and extended the grace period for those people who live in that area. So if you expected a water bill sometime in December and you didn't get one, you should be receiving it. If you haven't received it today, you should be receiving it in the next day or two, and your grace period has been extended. Your gra grace period has been extended for that uh, water billing period. Um, and the last thing is just a reminder I know there's been some discussion, and thankfully we didn't need it over the last couple days because there was no snow, and I'm not sad about that fact. But Franklin Township's information radio station is WRBX 655 AM. It is 1630 on your AM dial. There's not many people who listen to AM, but you should listen to it. Um, when there is an emergency and we're suggesting that you preset a, a preset on your car radio, that's the best way to receive it. Um, but it can be received on any AM radio. And the reason for us uh, going the AM radio route is that when all 
electricity is lost, and unfortunately, we pretty much dealt with that in 2012 with, uh, with Hurricane Sandy. Um, there is always the opportunity to go out to your car and turn on your car radio and rece receive emergency notifications from the town. So that is up and online, and you can certainly listen. And if we happen to have a, uh, a, an, a state of emergency where there's an emergency, um, you can tune into 1630 and receive information from the town. And all of our other community notifications, like Nixle and website notifications, um, I encourage everyone to sign up for, on our website for those notifications. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Manager, we are on, now on to item number 10, approval of the meetings. I present the following minutes for approval by the Township Council. Township Council reorganization work session regular meeting of January 7, 2019 at 7 p.m. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any changes to the minutes? Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vastanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. First vote. Given. Um, that was the minutes. Um, we are now on to the warrants, item number 11. Warrants in the amount of $7,917,185.11 on January 22nd, 2019 are presented to the Township Council for payment. I move that the warrants as read be paid. Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the warrants? Anyone want to pull an item? Hearing and seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vastanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Um, item um, number 12, the 2019 Hamilton Street Special Improvement District Budget. The following resolution is presented to the Township Council for adoption. Resolution 1944, introduction of the 2000 cal calendar year 2019 Hamilton Street SID budget and um, set public hearing date. Um, my notes don't have what the public hearing date is. February 26th. February 26th. So we have a motion. So moved. And a second. Seconded. Um, Mr. Manager, do you have anything you want to say about the SID budget? No, there's nothing to discuss at this point other than the fact that as it's currently proposed, there's no assessment for calendar year 2019 for the, uh, the property owners uh, within the SID. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? Madam Clerk? Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Item number 13, public hearing and adoption of ordinances on second reading. We have none. Item number 14, ordinances on introduction and first reading. So Mr. Mayor, I'm going to interrupt if I can, and I'm going to be sorry about ambushing our township manager, but if he can briefly explain A through D. So Mr. Mr. Wright, if you could wait till we get, get through those, we, we, will, we will get to those in kind. There's been no motion on them yet. It's not appropriate to discuss them. I, okay, go right ahead. But it, it comes down to, I want to discuss A through D before we even get down to reading the ordinance. So well, that's not, that's not, that is not the way a meeting is run. So we will get to the opportunity to discuss them. When we, when we get there. So these are ordinances on, and on introduction and first reading. Uh, the purpose of a first reading is essentially to introduce it to the public and allow the public to know it's coming up and that there will be a meeting on it. Um, ordinance 4262-19, an ordinance uh, to acquire by purchase or condemnation certain lands within the township of Franklin, Somerset County for open space purposes on the Township of Franklin, 
pursuant to NJSA 40A 12-13A, known as um, Block 282, Lot 8, 15 uh, Waldorf Street. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, proc, uh, posting and publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption to occur on Tuesday, February 12th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Complex. The purpose of this is to uh, acquire some land. Um, the the for purpose of these first two ordinances, essentially their, their joined ordinances, is to acquire land uh, at 15 uh, Waldorf Street. This is um, near the, um, the baseball parks. Uh, I, I'll call them Little League, although they are not officially part of the organization known as the Little League. Um, and this is to increase the uh, land holdings uh, we have in the area. Um, do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. And a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Now, is there any discussion on the first ordinance? Yes. I would like our township manager, and again, I'm going to apologize for not asking him earlier to uh, uh, explain that, you know, get it together. But if you can just go down and explain that together as a whole exactly why we did that and where we did that. For A and B, sure. So A and, A and B both relate to the same property. It's just two ordinances, one, one to authorize the, the acquisition and the other the funding mechanism for the acquisition. Um, 15 Waldorf Street is at the corner of Waldorf Street. And uh, oh, you're going to catch me here. Um, after all these years, you think I'd be good at the map, right? Um, it, it, is, it is Waldorf Street um, by the uh, baseball fields. It's the last piece of land that we, we don't own in a rectangle that currently forms a portion of the parking area for the baseball fields on DeKalb Street. Um, and uh, the, the purpose of acquiring this parcel is to allow us to construct the parking lot uh, to alleviate some of the concerns of area residents relating to on-street parking when people are attending those baseball games at the baseball complex on DeKalb Street. Um, so, so that is the purpose of this. The town also owns the land directly across Waldorf Street from this parcel um, at, that runs between uh, Waldorf Street and uh, Belmar. And so there is also the discussions at the early stages of, the, of a potential pocket park in that area of the, uh, of the township as well. So it's being acquired as, uh, as Green Acres open space. <coughs> Any other discussion? So for my brief comment, the, um, the ordinance reads, uh, acquire by purchase or condemnation. That's a term of art. We're, there's, no, <coughs> there's no condemnation. There's no um, uh, eminent domain being used here. Um, it's by purchase. Um, any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Galtieri. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt. Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Uh, B, Ordinance 4263-19. This is the capital ordinance providing for the acquisition of property known as Block 282, Lot 8, uh, in and by the Township of Franklin in the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey. Um, appropriating $49,000, therefore, from the Open Space Trust Fund of the Township to pay the cost thereof uh, at 15 Waldorf Street. Uh, the foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting publication in accordance with law and public hearing, and final adoption on Tuesday, February 12, 2019, at 7 p.m. Uh, at the Municipal Complex. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Seconded. Seconded. And a seconded any discussion. We've essentially discussed it. Seeing no discussion, Madam Clerk. 
Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Chaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vasanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. I'm going to hand the reading of the next two ordinances to Councilman Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Okay. Ordinance number 4264-19, an ordinance to acquire by purchase or condemnation certain lands within the Township of Franklin, Somerset County, for municipal purposes in the Township of Franklin, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12-13A, known as Block 228, Lots 17 through 24, 150 I don't know how to say this. Shevinkin, Shevinko? Shevinko. Shevinko Avenue, Lewis Street. The foregoing <laughs> ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption on Tuesday, February 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Municipal co Complex. This is an ordinance to acquire uh, by purchase a land that we will be using for the um, Youth Center parking lot to expand the parking lot. Is there any um, other discussion? I'm sorry, is there a motion to introduce? Motion, so moved. motion to introduce. <laughs> All right, seconded. seconded. <laughs> um, any discussion? Any other discussion? The main reason I had Councilwoman Francois, two reasons is because this is in support of the Youth Center, which is in her child. And also, I couldn't pronounce the name of that street. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? So, so, Mr. Mayor, just the, to cut to the chase here. Um, so this is the ordinance where you're authorizing the acquisition of the property. The next ordinance that comes in line is the ordinance that defines the funding mechanism, which is your municipal capital uh, fund, improvement fund. Um, and it also, the, the next ordinance will include not just the acquisition price, but also the cost of uh, clearing and construction of the parking lot. Uh, so that's why the number might seem a little high. It's not, that's not the acquisition price. I can tell you that, you know, for public record, the acquisition price was $230,000 for the parcel, and the remainder of that capital ordinance is all of the costs associated with the acquisition as well as the development of the land for, uh, as a parking lot. Uh, if I can ask one more question, Mr. Manager. Sure. Um, how many parking spaces do we anticipate? It's anticipated 40 to 50 parking spaces. 40 to 50 parking spaces? Yes. That's what I wanted to hear because I wanted to make sure Ms. Francois had a lot of space for that community center. So, good deal. And we're actually very excited about the fact that we can acquire that land and purchase it. Thank Dr. Chase. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's any other discussion, Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Noni Jaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vastanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Next ordinance is item number D, ordinance number 4265-19, capital ordinance appropriating $605,000 from the capital fund balance and capital improvement fund providing for the acquisition of property known as block 228, lot 17 through 24, 150 Shevikino Avenue, Lewis Street, as well as the design and construction of a parking lot on the site in Somerset, New Jersey, and by the Township of Franklin in the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, the Township of Franklin to pay for the cost therefore of, thereof. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption on Tuesday, February 12th at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Complex. We have a motion. <coughs> so moved. And a second. Second. So it said 605,000. Uh, um, that's for both the acquisition of the property and for the construction of the parking lot. That's why the price is uh, so high. 
uh, just saves us doing another uh, ordinance. It was um, 200 and Mr. Manager, it was 230,000 for the property? Yes. And the rest was uh, for? Construction costs. Construction. Uh, any other discussion on the item? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Galtieri. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Noni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt. Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Councilman Wright. Yes. Okay, and for those of you following uh, Council Chamber weather, uh, it has turned frigid again. Um, we're going into another cold snap or what is it, Arctic vortex or something. Um, for those of you engineers out there, we have a runaway bang bang controller. Um, ordinance 4266 19. Um, item number E, uh, amending the code of the Township of Franklin County, uh, Township of Franklin Chapter 226, Vehicles and Traffic, and providing new section 226-35, uh, road closures except for emergency vehicles, providing for the closure of Willow Avenue to all traffic except uh, emergency vehicles. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, and publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption on Tuesday, February 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Complex. So basically this is closing the little appendix of um, Willow Avenue that um, goes south of, south of Smithwald um, that leads to nowhere except a concrete <laughs> barrier. Um, it will prevent cars from racing down there, finding out there's no outlet, and racing uh, back. Um, do we have a motion on the item? Motion. So moved. I second. Any discussion? Uh, so just repeating what you said, Mr. Mayor, that end of the road goes to nowhere, and it will prevent trucks from sitting, sitting idle behind, what, two houses there at most? It, yeah, there's there's two half. houses. I'm actually looking at the aerial right now because I was showing Councilwoman Pruitt where it was. Um, so it, it it this the barrier across Willow Avenue will serve not only a purpose of of keeping uh, cars from going down there, trucks idling, whatever, but we've experienced it, illegal dumping at that end because it's an isolated area and there's no houses there, and this will keep cars from being able to go down at that end of the street and dump, which is the the primary concern that we have. Will I still be able to ride my bike around? You will, yes. Yeah, so the, okay. the openings are still there for the, the connection between Willow and, and uh, um, Wilson Road, and you'll be able to walk it. And it's just it's just they'll keep vehicular traffic off it, which will keep you know be a deterrent to illegal dumping. We own the property to the west of it as part of our open space inventory. Thank you. Pardon me for the uh, sidebar here. Um, so, yes, I remember when GPS first came out, I said, oh, there's a way to get there quicker, and that's when I met the barriers. Um, any other discussion items? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Galtieri. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Noni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt. Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Um, ordinance number 4267-19, an ordinance amending the municipal code of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 112, Land Development Article uh, 13, Sign Regulations, Digital Sign Regulations. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption on Tuesday, March 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Complex. So um, you heard me say the words digital sign. We are, we are not, this is not the digital billboards uh, of the past. Um, these are signs um, that would go in front of government uh, buildings, including schools, that have um, basically the ability to change a sign digitally uh, without having to go up there and, and change 
uh, numbers. You see them in front of a number of schools. These signs will not scroll. Uh, we have um, uh, illumination limitations on them, uh, but we do want to get uh, our, um, our schools in particular the ability to give the school, excuse me, the ability in particular to um, get messages out, announce plays, announce uh, safety issues uh, for children, uh, et cetera. Do we have a motion on that item? So I moved. And a second? Se second. Okay, moved and seconded. Councilman Vassanella, I know you have an issue. Uh, yeah, I just uh, checked it and uh, thank you, you and Councilwoman Francois on the committee with myself. We went over this quite a bit, um, and Councilman Chase. Uh, and I think it was just a misprint. Uh, the, the turn time for the signs had five minutes, and I um, believe that we were pretty unanimous that we were going to at least for now have it at 15 minutes. So I just wanted to make that minor adjustment. And also uh, <laughs> reference, uh, as much as the focus was schools, it will also allow um, first f uh, Firehouses, libraries, the the other government entities that we have in town that really are a public service and sometimes want to provide a public announcement um, will also be covered covered by this. Uh, or, you know, the, you know the, the main focus was to help the schools, um, but hopefully everybody will be able to benefit. So that my motion is simply to change that. Uh, what I, I, uh, I, I the zero five to the one five. Yes. Uh, I, Let's Mike, speak in the mic, please. Mike, sorry about that. The, we're amending item uh, section 10 of the ordinance to provide that the minimum display duration shall be 15 minutes instead of five. Right. So yeah. it's a typo, but it is a change from what was published, so I need a second on that to change it. Second it. Moved and second in any discussion on changing it. We are not discussing, we are not passing the full motion now, or we are not introducing the full motion now. This is a vote on the amendment or a discussion on the amendment. Seeing no other discussion on the amendment, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes means to change it to 15 minutes from five minutes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Noni Jaga? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Fruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, so now that that's been amended, do we have any discussion on the full ordinance? Seeing no other discussion. Oh. Oh, yes, Just sir. a comment, uh, yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. Um, Ken Daly actually wanted something like this that he could program and get rid of the clutter of the many different signs in front of the municipal building. And so it would be allowing, it would actually allow us to better communicate uh, with people and digitally be able to control it remotely. So it is bringing us into the 21st century. And uh, I hope it will also enhance communication. So thank you. Any other discussion? Madam Master Clerk. Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Councilman Galtieri. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt. Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. We are now on to the consent agenda resolutions items A through P as listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting are presented to the Council for Council for adoption. Do I have a motion on the item? So moved. And a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any item wish to be pulled or discussed separately? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I would like to pull resolution 1957, authorization 2019. Yeah. Fire district salaries. Do you want to vote on that separately or you want it to discuss it right now? Well, if the township manager would explain that now, then I guess we can do that within the whole consent agenda. So <coughs> that particular resolution in, in, a, in a rather little quirky part of New Jersey state law, you as council members um, have to, uh, by resolution, authorize the salaries of the elected officials of the different fire districts of the town. Um, those fire districts include those salaries 
in their budgets which are voted on in February and thus the reason why it would be on your agenda now. Um, and the, it, they, you, you don't authorize their budget, the voters authorize their budget, but you by resolution authorize their proposed salaries. Uh, it, rather hard to explain why. I don't think anyone has ever given me a very good reason why, but that's the law, so that's why it's on your resolution, uh, on your consent agenda. Um, it, it's calling for, um, I think all but one district is proposing the same salaries as last year. Um, I believe it's district number one shows an increase of $500, Anne Marie? That's correct. So it's a $500 increase annually for the fire commissioners of fire district number one. So my, my next question um, may or may not know the answer. I might have to swing to our esteemed county, I mean our township clerk. Yeah, I'm, I'm elevating you too. Um, because it's an off year, I mean, uh, off-month election, as it were, and so few residents come out and actually vote, and that I would have to swing to our township clerk. Would that be uh, something that would happen? Wait, I, are you talking about the fire districts? What's the fire, the dist fire, fire, fire districts, districts are in, the are in February. 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 Right, that, right. And, and that's when they always are there, February, and on a st I guess it's the second Saturday? It's Usually, no, I think it's the third. It's usually third. like President's Weekend that it falls in. Third Saturday. Right. Third the, Saturday. The, mem uh, the amount of votes, the amount of voters that come out, uh, is that a high vote, a low vote, or is just per district, do, do they come out in numbers to vote for their particular well, salaries or what have you? It's usually a low turnout. I don't personally have anything to do with that mm -hmm, election. Mm -hmm. That They're all run by the individual fire districts. There's usually a vote on the order of 50 per district. 50, Excuse me? Usually about 50 people, no more than 100 people. If there's a contested position, sometimes you'll get 125 people out. Relatively low turnout. Yes, So correct. for a low turnout, and again, people don't vote, but yet, they're going to raise their salary or purchase equipment or do something of that expenditure, and yet no one votes on it except maybe a hundred people, because it is an off year, uh, off month election, and no one actually cares about it. But that's part of your taxes, and if you don't want to come out to vote, then you will have to go along with a, with 100 people as a township, uh, our, our mayor said, and if you're happy with that, then continue not to vote for your fire district election. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Any other discussion? Mayor? Yes, sir. I just had a, a, a question to the manager about item C and the question is, where is Toff Trees Court? I thought I knew the first ward fairly well. Well, that's just a large part of the first ward has a Princeton mailing address. I do. Bear with me one second. And I'll I, I also want to be sure it isn't a typo. <laughs> I, I, I this is an historic moment. The manager, who was a police officer for umpteen years actually he knows everything he actually doesn't know the location of a street it's because it has to be a, a spelling it's a error street? It, it's not correct it's well that's part of, that's the main reason i was asking okay. i suspected that it might be a spelling error it it it, it obviously is because i i <laughs> have never heard of it and the mayor's right i know everything <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not afraid to tell you that. Well, um, it, and, it could have been. I, not, I second <laughs> that motion. He was not afraid to tell you that. It could have been constructed at, since you left the police force. It could be, but generally I see them because I, I still have some involvement in the maintenance of the street index. But it, it, it clearly is a spelling error, and, and I oh, don't. Oh, I bet it's treetop it, circle. I, I believe it's treetop tree circle. Do we have to pull it if we're not no. sure? 
I'm no, sorry. No, account the account number, number I'm quite certain is correct, and I could look that up, but I don't think I need to bore all of you right now with that while we uh, while we debate it. Um, so I move that we delete the address for now. And we use have the, the account, account number. number. Do we have a second on that? Seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So Aye. that's deleted. The, the attorney has said we can do that. Any other items of discussion? Joyfully, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. So, Council, besides having this meeting, you hear us reporting on other meetings, and when Councilwoman Chanel Robinson um, left, the uh, council, she left certain standing committees positions um, unfilled, or we left them unfilled at the reorganization meeting. So we're on to item number 17, 2019 council standing committees liaison representative, uh, liaison and representative vacancies. They are the standing committees um, for one year for financial oversight and public safety. Then there are boards, committees, and commissions Advisory Board of Health, Board of Education, Joint Subcommittee, Fire Chief Association, Hamilton Street Advisory Board, Raritan and Millstone Rivers Flood Control Commission, Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, um, YSC Alliance Against Drug Abuse, and the Community Foundation, which is actually a two-year term. Um, do we have a motion to fill those positions? Yes, uh, by Councilwoman. Pruitt. Mr. Um, Mayor? Yes, sir. One of those boards. Wait, do we have a second? Second. Okay, now discussion, Mr. Wright. One of the boards I didn't hear was the Housing Authority. I might have missed that one. No, it wasn't on there. It's right. not on there because I don't think that would. She, she actually took my position on the Housing Authority. She, ah. She's still a member on that board. She Excuse me? No. She did not give that up. She's still a member of that board of the Housing Authority. Okay, can she still be a member of that? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. And that's why we have a clerk as good as we have for catching that. So we have a, um, we have, I, I guess a motion, a second, like what we, I, that should have been as a nomination, I guess. And before we do have the vote, um, Councilwoman Pruitt, would you accept those? It sounds pretty hefty, and it is, but that's the work we do here. You okay. do get about $9,000 a year for this, remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm clearly doing it for the money. <laughs> um, you know, I, I part of this was to serve, and I'm going to do it. Okay, so we have a nomination and an acceptance. Uh, any other nominations for those positions? <laughs> Um, we can do this by acclamation. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's your last chance to oppose, Ms. Pruitt. Um, uh, motion is or the, nom the vote is passed. Congratulations, Ms. Pruitt. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and we. Ms. Mr. Mayor, can yes, I, I just I, so, Amory, that resolution can stay. That's the billing address, and that's correct. And it okay. is that address in Princeton that is the billing address for that account. So, so the resolution was correct as written with the correct spelling of the street that doesn't exist in Franklin because it's the billing address, not the location address. Uh, uh, see, I did get to look it up quick because you were doing all of that committee yeah. stuff. You do know everything. <laughs> um, How to use Google. <laughs> 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 Item B, 2019 boards, committees, commissions, vacancies. These are civilian positions. Are there any uh, <coughs> nominations for anyone for any of these civilian positions we have left open? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I have several nominations. Oh, boy. One is to uh, reappoint Kathy Bloomig to the Agricultural Advisory Committee. She's a longtime member. She had written a letter stating that she did not wish to continue, but she was persuaded to continue. But we had not appointed, filled that position uh, at our reorganization meeting. So I nominate Kathy Bloomig for the Agricultural Advisory Committee. 
I actually don't see it on the I don't list. See that on the list. Is it available? Yes. Yes, it's available. Okay. Seconded. No. You don't need seconds for nominations. Any others, Mr. Chase? You said you and had several. And for the Environmental Commission, since Mary Lauco has resigned, uh, we have a position for a regular member. And so what I would like to do is elevate Stanislav Jarash to regular member and appoint Jessica Johnson as the alternate to Mr. Jarash's position. Can we okay. do that in one step? I mean, I, I got a yes. Okay. Um, any other positions? That's it. Does anyone have any other nominations for those positions? Hearing none, we can do this by acclamation. All in favor, as stated, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Are there any other nominations for any other positions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, sir. So for the sewage authority, um, at the uh, at the last meeting, um, we had appointed a, a one of our commissioners to a to start a new five year term. I regret to inform everybody that the um, the commissioner passed away the next night. Um, so I would uh, uh, ask that we can. Uh, I'd like to nominate our alternate. Uh, number one, Brianna DeVoe, to fill that spot for the uh, one regular member uh, starting a five-year term uh, to start serving as of uh, our February reorg meeting. Are there any other nominations for that position? Hearing none, we can do this by acclamation. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Congratulations. Any other nominations for any other positions? Hearing none, um, that was sewage authority. Okay, um, we're going to move on to executive session. Oh, you have mayor's appointment. Yes, and I'm skipping that. Um, we are moving on to executive session, resolution 1961, authorized executive session, potential land acquisition, route 518. Um, this is, uh, I already said that. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Seconded. Uh, any discussion on executive session? Um, hearing none, all in favor of going into, I'm sorry, um, Madam Clerk, call, call the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onitaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? At this time, council, council will adjourn to the executive session to discuss authorized executive session potential land acquisition route 518. No other actions will be taken by the township council at the conclusion of the executive session. Therefore, the recording of this meeting will now end. Uh, be well, Franklin.